factory stitches. So you've placed your pattern on your fabric, you've cut it out, you marked your notches if you watched last week's video, but now darts, dots and all sorts of symbols that need to be transferred to our fabric. What do you do? Stick with me and we will look at how to transfer those markings onto fabric. Let's roll up our sleeves, we can do this. <laughs> I'm going to tackle on this piece is the dart. Now this piece is the front of a coat I'm going to be making and the darts are the bust darts to give shape to the front of the garment. Now if you've seen one of my other videos I have shown how to mark and to sew a dart and I've used a friction pen which is just a writing pen but the beauty of it is that the ink actually fades away when you press it with a hot iron. However, if I were to mark all my little bits and pieces all over this pattern with my friction pen and then say I sew the dart and I'm pressing the dart into place, I could inadvertently erase one of the other marks that I've so carefully made, which means I'm back to square one. So I'd rather get it right from the outset. So check out the other video on how to mark and sew a dart, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using a technique called Taylor's Tacks and I'm going to mark the darts on this piece with Taylor Tacks because I've actually got a bunch of needle and thread all ready to go. So I've just taken a piece of contrasting fabric, I'm using black because I've got a very very pale greyish green here so that's going to stand out really nicely. I've threaded it through double and I've just knotted the end and it's quite a long piece. I'm going to start with the apex of the dart which is this dot here. Now I'm going to make sure that I put my needle into the, the circle that's marked on that dart at the right size. I'm doing a size 16 so I need to make sure I'm using the size 16 dot. So here it is right here, the centre of it. I'm actually going to go through both my layers of fabric because these are two fronts left and right and I need to make sure they both are mirror images of each other so I'm doing them together. So I'm going down and then back up. I'm making just a very small, maybe a millimetre and a half stitch. And I'm just going to pull that through until I end up with a tail about a couple of inches long. And then I'm going to go back down at the other angle. So this was up and down, so I'm going to go left and right here. About the same, about a millimetre and a half, two millimetres. And yes, I am sewing through the the tissue paper and both layers of fabric. So just be careful that you don't sew through yourself as well. It has been known to happen. And I'm going to leave that loop about the same length as that tail and then I'm going to leave another tail here about the same length again and I'm just going to snip that. Take that away. So what we've got is, so it looks like a loop and two tails and we're just going to leave that there and that's actually anchored through both layers of fabric. So back to my needle and thread. I've used a decent amount of thread so that I don't have to keep re-threading and I've actually got spares set up so that I don't have to stop and start with my threading. Now that was the second dot in for the size 16 so I'm going to use the second dot in here. That is my size 16 dot and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So it's down and up through one side of the circle, leaving about a two inch tail, come back from the other direction, down and up, cross phase. You can get a little tangled here, so you just have to kind of tease the bits apart. It does pay to hold your tongue the right way too when you're doing this sometimes. and snip that. And the last one is the third part of the dart, so that's the lower end. And that's pretty much all the thread on that needle for now used up. 
And there we have one dart marked in the three places indicated on the pattern. Okay, so we've got one dart marked and I've marked a few other dots around the place as well. This line up here marks the centre front of the garment. The pattern extends beyond the centre front because this is a coat, so we've got an overlapping left and right for buttons and buttonholes, but this would mark the centre front that would actually run right down the centre of your torso. I've marked the centre, sorry, the dot at the top, which also puts in to, um, onto the material marks where that centre front would be. There are a couple of other dots that are actually quite important, and they mark the placement of the pocket. Now, they are here and here, so the pocket will be placed and lined up with those two dots, so it's important to mark them in place at the beginning. So they're all done exactly the same way that I showed you, and now we're going to very, very carefully take the pattern paper off the material, and we'll be left with two pieces of material stitched together with these big loopy stitches. So just very, very carefully, I'm just holding down with my thumb and just gently lifting that paper off. It will rip the paper a little bit, but don't worry about that. Just very carefully take it off. I've got a small hole there. You can use the pattern again and again, which is what I intend to do because otherwise it's not cost effective. And just very, very carefully just holding that thread and then just gently taking the paper away. Lucky last one here. And there it goes. So I can now discard that pattern piece. And I'm left with two pieces stitched together at a few strategic points. But I want to separate them because I need two separate pieces that are both marked with these tailor's tacks. So what we do because our needle went through here and it's marked down there but it's all loose here, is we're going to just gently tease apart like so and then I'm just going to snip in the middle there and what I've got you just got to be very careful because they can pull out very easily is I've got one piece here showing my mark and my other piece showing my mark, in fact that's showing on both sides, but that doesn't matter. And I'm going to do exactly the same, I'm just going to peel it back, gently pull until I've got about an inch, inch and a half, snip it just in the middle there. This is why you need that, that good long tail at the beginning, because if it was too short, you'd be pulling everything straight through. Last one down here, which is a pocket marker. And the end result, we can easily see where those marks are. And once we've done our stitching, they just pull out really, really easily. And then you just throw them in your rubbish. And that is as simple as it is. So you've seen tailor tacks in action. One other alternative is you can pick up from your fabric store a fabric marker which is much like a felt pen and you would mark your dots and other markings onto your material and when your garment's finished you put it in the wash and you, it washes right out and leaves no trace. So if that is an option you might like to consider, go for it. I have heard really, really good things about that option. Personally, I prefer to use the tailor tacks because I don't want to wash my garment necessarily straight away. I might want to wear it straight away. So, But that's another option for you to think about. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like, thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. And also, 
click on the bell icon and you will be notified when there's a new video. And I love your comments, questions and suggestions because they help me work out what videos I'm going to do down the track. So until next time, happy stitching, stitch in victory guys and we'll see you next time.